Hi, it's Russell with SP, and today we're going to be installing the new blade trigger for the Shocker RSX. These are available online from your favorite SP retailer, currently only in black gloss. These are the same quality trigger that your factory one is, so it's got the dual sealed ball bearings in it. It's got all the adjustments that screws already pre-installed, and they have a little bit of Loctite on them already, so ready to install right out of the package. To get to the install, we're only going to need one Allen key. It's a 332nd. It's included in the kit uh, when you receive your shocker. If you are using your own, make sure that you're not using a ball end side um, just because you can uh, have less engagement with the Allen head itself and potentially damage the Allen head or your tool. So again, when you're doing this install, we recommend you use a standard Allen instead of a ball head. So what we're going to be doing is loosening and ultimately removing the two conical set screws on either side of the trigger that hold it in place. Now the reason we're going to be removing them is so that we can put a little bit of blue Loctite on them when we put them back in so that it doesn't vibrate out and get uh, loose while we're playing. So installation is very straightforward. We're going to take and loosen these set screws. Righty tighty lefty loosey just like on any other thread. Come all the way out. And on the other side the same. With just a little bit of motivation, we're going to take our stock trigger out, go ahead and set it aside, and we're going to put our new trigger in. Now, if this was a gun that was going out, we'd obviously put that blue Loctite on those set screws, um, but since this one's just for demonstration, we're not going to do that. So, what we want to do is with the gun straight up and down, we're going to put our trigger in. Now the reason we do this is so that the micro switch on the board is resting in its most back position. That'll prevent damage to the micro switch while we're installing. So we're going to go ahead and just drop it in just like we had. And now keeping in this position, we're going to snug up those set screws again, being mindful to keep the trigger centered in its groove. The reason we want it centered is because if it's off to one side or another, it can rub on the frame itself and you get a kind of a gritty feel or the trigger could stick either in the forward or back position which would not be what we want. So you see every once in a while I just kind of touch the trigger to make sure that it's still moving freely and engaging that micro switch and then I'm working back forth from side to side making sure to keep that trigger centered. Now a couple things that are very important here. First of all, the conical set screws that hold the trigger in only need to be snug. If you tighten them extremely hard, you can actually bow out the frame right there by the screw, so you can potentially do some damage to your frame. So you want to make sure that they're snug, tight, but don't torque the heck out of them. The other thing is, when you're setting your new trigger up, you want to always make sure that your post travel is set so that it is stopping the movement of the trigger and you're not just using the switch to stop. Now that's important because if you use the switch as a backstop, you can damage the switch if you were to squeeze it and actually break the switch. So the way I do that is I make sure that I set my back travel first, then I set my firing point, and then my pre-travel, and then finally the magnetic resistance. So very simple, quick install. Now I have my blade trigger in there, ready to go out and play.